We're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Time for us to go th through the papers this morning. Okunabo Nkotaria joins us this morning from River State. Nkotaria, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning, Miss. Good morning, Miss. All right, let's quickly take a look at, uh, you know, the papers this morning. I'd like to start off with the Daily Trust newspaper. Uh, the board caption says, Potential Flashpoint to watch ahead of 2023 elections. Southeast, you have Lagos, Kaduna, Plateau, Kanu, Boronu on red list. Hate speech, fake news identified as triggers. IPOP, Yoruba secession is plan or plot to stop polls. Uh, that's what the IG, IGP is saying. Actions government must take before polls. The riders you find underneath the board caption. Messi delivers as Argentina beats fans to win the World Cup. Why Atiku will defeat OB in South East, PDP campaign cancel. Untold death stories at Abuja Sports where train crush uh, the NTA accountant. Very unfortunate. NEF rescues seven Chinese six months after abduction in Niger State. How port cessation saved Nigeria over 1.1 trillion naira in 16 years. That's uh, what operators are quoted to say. And gunmen born emo magistrate courts. Feels like uh, there's no government. There's no presence of government in you know this region. Uh, these elements seem to be you know on top of the seem to be having upper hand. Well, that's the much we can take this morning on the Daily Trust newspaper. Let's quickly go over to the nation uh, with the following headlines. Atiku dumps marking day for Adelike bypasses G5. Uh, final reconciliation meet meeting with WK others collapses. A PDP candidate to rely on old allies in Benue, Rivers, Abia, Enugu. Uh, next one, why federal government can't add 40, uh, 24 trillion Naira loan to national debt? 25 generals among 756 retired senior military officers. More pressure on Obasaki Okoa over 13% derivation. DSS withdraws personnel from Oshun Governor Adelike. Doctor driver uh, bandits, uh, drug supplier jailed. Uh, some stories. Of course, uh, uh, Messi and Argentina not left out with uh, uh, pictures there and a story to go with it. Messi makes history uh, with Argentina. Well, we turn our attention to the punch. The punch says Dangote 7 up 170 firms may lose 2.4 trillion Naira tax weavers. Uh, this, uh, the bold caption you find this morning. And, uh, you know, follow up story to that says 47 new application awaits government's nod as finance bill undergoes NAS approval. Federal government eyes over 2 trillion Naira company tax revenue. Government wants against tax incentive removal. Well, this is uh, the finance bill we're talking about. And cash limit, POS operators give CBN ultimatum. <laughs> How can these things be? 80 million Nigerians risk job loss in 2020, 2030, I beg your pardon. That's according to the World Bank. These are projections. Oil earnings increased by 308 billion naira. And Oshun PDP APC feud deepens over 407 billion naira debts because, uh, you know, the government said, I cleared all debts before I left the office. And then whose report should we believe? But we need to see, you know, facts, documents. On new seems increased by 177% to 105 million. Now an abducted couple killed despite 7.5 million payment. Uh, these are some of the headlines we take this morning. And the final paper, uh, we have uh, The Guardian with the following headlines. Concerns as government shrugs of key inflation drivers. More from the paper, Kogi Agbakoba knocks EFCC, says commission guilty of breaking rule of law. Uh, reveal your real name, background, Atiku campaign, there's a tenable. Again, many feared killed as gunmen attack Enugu community. Ohaneze knocks EFCC over utterance on a Quirimado's trial. Some headlines on the front page of uh, The Guardian. And we would like to bring in Opuna Boy uh, at this time. Uh, Mr. Nkotaria, let's quickly look at the uh, situation in the People's Democratic Party. Uh, 
uh, the nation is super giving us uh, of giving it a front page attention with its lead story there. Atiku dumps Mark in day for delicate bypasses uh, G5. And he's also working with allies since Wiki Ekbazu and his uh, uh, colleagues in the other states are not uh, playing ball or are not uh, in the same boat with him. What, what are your thoughts? Will this backfire on the PDP presidential campaign at the end of the day? Yes, Kofi, not at all. I said not at all because. Um First and foremost, it is not over you. I have always, I have always advocated for even the expulsion of the G5 government. Because the role they are playing is worse than what even the opposition parties are doing. You cannot remain in a party and continue to work against the success of that party. That is, that in itself is anti party. And I've always known that the issue of are you must go was just a special excuse, really, advanced by the G5 governor. The main issue is that VK was pitched at the convention and he is really angry that he was pitched at that convention by Atiku. And he will stop at nothing to ensure that having lost at the convention, Atiku himself does not win the general election. Before now, before the convention, Wike had said or boasted that he was the only one that could defeat the APs. He had also boasted that no one can win him at the convention. Unfortunately, he lost. So that anger is still in him. Even if tomorrow you say, okay, I used to go, they will come up with another reason. You know, Kofi, there is what you call the glass plate. What is a glass plate? You come up with almost impossible conditions. Conditions you know that cannot be met. You say you have integrity. If you have integrity, after the elections, you came to River State and in addressing River's people, you said, even though you are not happy with the outcome of the convention, that you will still support because you are a party man. As at that time, there were no conditions. He did not tell the vast people that all Nigerians, because it was more or less uh, uh, talking to the world, he did not tell Nigerians that you will support the party, but on one condition. There was no provision that, oh, the national chairman must go. You never said that. You said you're a lawyer party man, and that you're not a political prostitute. Therefore, you are not going to leave the party for any reason because you have contributed so much to the sustenance of the party from the day you became a governor. All of a sudden, you now said, which is an answer for, you now said, ah, you must go. Now, for you to leave, there are procedural conditions that must be obligations that must be met. You know that it is almost impossible for you to go unless he leaves of his own volition. That is if he resigns. It's almost impossible for him to leave unless he resigns. That is number one. Number two, even if you leave, the man that will succeed that you must come from that zone because you are talking of the Constitution. That it is so spelled out in the Constitution. You are now saying, no, for your own selfish reasons, you will go and the South China will take over. How can? That is not possible. Are they going to rewrite the Constitution just for your selfish reasons? They have also come up to say, okay, fine. Ayu can go, will go, but that will be after the convention, before his tenure expires. You say no. Why? Are, are you going to dictate to the millions of people in the PDP? Are you the only governor just because you lost? So, I mean, look at your uh, Oshu state. Now you have a PDP governor right there. Yes, okay. Oshu was controlled by or governed by an APC government. It is minus five, now minus, it, it should have been plus six. But now it is still going to be minus four because we gained Oshun State, which was being governed by uh, the APC. But the most important thing is you must call up the bluff of these characters. The truth is, WK will ensure he has been moving from one state to the other. He went to Lagos to endorse uh, a, an APC governor, Samuel, for a second term. He has always criticized, castigated that he. There is nothing he has not said. And so are you, he's gone, he's gone beyond uh, dignity, beyond the realm of dignity, 
ready to call the man a thief. We don't want to go into all that. Let us think that because it is actually gutter speech. It is also against the electoral act. You must use your words. But let us leave all that. Today you said no. I think they had the last meeting over the weekend or something. To discuss, to see if they can reach a rapprochement. But we can refuse. So the whole truth, it has nothing to do with the issue of the South. South, South, you said the South. If it, is, if it should even come to the South, it should go to the Southeast. So if you are talking of integrity, why did you contest? You should have gone to the Southeast. You shouldn't have contested at all. Because they said that people wouldn't have contested. Because in 2019, they ensured that no South are contested. Then you, uh, yes, or we shouldn't have contested at all. Because you should have gone to the Southeast. If you are actually talking about equity, fairness, and justice. Just a quick, a quick follow-up question to, to that. What do you think, um, do you think it may have played out differently? Uh, because at the end of the day, we look at the, the back and forth. There was a lot of back and forth uh, late last year, you know, um, and yeah, late last year, there's a lot of back and forth uh, about the removal of Uche Secundus. I covered that story extensively. Several meetings in Abuja, several, you know, even including the one where it seemed like Secundus was winning. Uh, and Wiki was, you know, came out of that meeting pressing his phone, looking so angry and all that. But at the end of the day, uh, he, his will, he, he had his way and Secundus was removed. Um, and IU now has become the party chairman. Um, I want you to look at, talk about that in relation to uh, the governor's current demands that Atiku must go. And also, yeah, the fact that... Um, yeah, you must, you must go. Yeah, you must go. So, and the fact that also, that's the more, and the fact number two, that there was a committee, a zoning committee set up by the party that had so one of the governors who is with him now, and they said it's a throwing it open to everyone. Yes, yeah, so those those two issues very quickly, please. Okay, okay. Now, when you talk of secondus, not just secondus, don't forget, he brought in uh, a model Shelley. He brought in uh, this former governor, I've forgotten that his name, before secondus, single handedly, all believing they are going to protect his own interest. Now, Secondus is a strong ally of Atiku. And believing that Secondus was going to work for the success or emergence of Atiku at the convention, he worked against Secondus and ensured his removal. Are you, are you the only one in charge of PDP? Are you the only one that sustained PDP? If today, whatever you've done for PDP, it's like paying back. It's requiting what PDP has done for you. Because whatever you are today, it is PDP that made you what you are today. After all, one of the fans, are you himself is the founding father? One of the founding fathers of PDP, Alex Ekwebe, was also denied the ticket. He remained in the PDP. He did not leave. That's what they call loyalty, fidelity to the party. Then now, let us, you also mentioned the issue of, uh, please, what is it again, Because we don't have uh, that. Uh, the, 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 uh, the zoning committee that was set up, I think he had a... Yeah, the zoning yeah. committee that was set up was, was the chairman was at home. Now, just because you believe that you have that gravitas, you have that weight, you can influence things. You agree with the time to make sure it was thrown open. If it was thrown open, how can you then accuse a people? It was no zone. In 2019, it was zone. So there are two different scenarios. Now it was thrown then, uh, the 2020, uh, last, this year, I think, it was thrown open. So how then do you accuse a people? If it's thrown open, there is free for all. Because it was no zone. So it's free for all. So you cannot even say he went contrary to the, uh, uh, what is it called, the party constitution. But even if you go contrary to the party constitution, it is not the national constitution. It is not the constitution of the Republic of Nigeria. If we have to go by the party constitution, the last candidate who was the president was uh, Jonathan Goodlaw. So I'm not even going to go to, to, the, to, to, to the north. Because good law was a kind of PDP. PDP is not the cause of PDP is not the cause of the of Nigeria. So we can look at another issue before we move on. Uh, 86 days just before the elections, uh, 2023 elections, some flashpoints have been identified, and these flashpoints are points where there might likely be electoral violence. How do you uh, react? That's on the Daily Trust, by the way, Daily Trust newspaper. Uh, it talks about the Southeast. The Southeast asked the Southeast, and... Um, 
Lagos, Kaduna, Plateau, Kanu, Borno. These are, you know, these flashpoints that have been identified for likely violence. What are your thoughts? Yes, I think that is as a result of the hate speeches and the stimulation of it. Father, like uh, uh, I'm really surprised that ever the department. I mean, I'm really surprised, especially with the executive uh, orders 21 and 22, and the the insidious statements coming from the governor and and his colleagues. I'm really surprised that ever the department. There is a flashpoint as well, so I'm really surprised. Anyway, there might be a review. But um, what the government to do, why they mention states like Dima and Go, you know, they've been burning nine neck offices and all that, uh, attacking nine neck officials. Then we also have a situation where an APDP woman leader also was also killed in one of these states. So where, these are some of the reasons, I believe, these are some of the reasons that might have uh, caused the INEC or the security of to say, to mention certain states as flashpoints. Now, what do they have to do? I'm talking about the security agencies. What do they have to do? These flashpoints, they talk, it's not the first time, we've always had flashpoints, right, from uh, 1999 to date. We've always had flashpoints. Now, if it, uh, 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 having this information ahead of time should also help you to prepare more, as far as in those areas. But it will be at their own peril, should they ignore these other states that have not been mentioned as flashpoints. Because the politicians we have right now are desperate. Especially if you look at Tinubu, if you listen to his comments, the comments of his wife and so on, you realize that to them is a do or die affair. You must vote for me or there will not be a Nigeria. That is the impression that is increasing. Obi, no. Obi has, not, Obi has been very, very calm and has been, it is carried on with so much dignity in this campaign. So much. No matter how he votes, he has this impeccable, conscious public persona that you know, uh, serves as a uh, coat of armor protecting a heroin act. That's the kind of person will be. And people do the same thing. They have been very calm. And people have never even attacked all those that, they, that, but, have, um, that have been put on control on it. Open so up what up. the you, yes. Let's, you know, still stay with the list. Uh, as much as you say you agree with, you know, the states that have been identified, the southeast as a region, but what about Lagos? How come Lagos, you know, is on top of this list or as part of the flashpoint for, you know, likely violence? What exactly? I just mentioned, I just mentioned these people now. I just mentioned these people. I, I, that I, I'm talking so fast that it is the big complex. I mentioned Tinubu's statements, exactly. You know, you're making all kinds of uh, inflammatory statements, threatening left, right, and center, even before the convention. If it is why do, look at what they said, they will send away the evils if they don't vote, that they cannot come to make us this. So this, 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 it does it does a worry when you make such statements. And now when you come out to test it, and they, okay, look at even when they had this rally or something, and the people didn't come out, they went and closed all their shops, and that some of them were paid to pay for the five thousand euro they are out. So it does a worry. That that's why they say these are price points because you have a man that is desperate. Whether you like it or not, kind of kind of attitude, you must look for me. I must be as the president of the country. So. Definitely, Lagos will take the lead. All right, all right, Mr. Sorry, as a paper on the uh, sorry, on the front page of the Nation newspaper, I'd like us to just uh, round off with that one um, pressure or more pressure on uh, uh, Obasaki Okoa. Uh, in fact, the paper you know adds more. If you go into details, it added another name, Udom. Others over thirteen percent derivation, or we can call it six hundred and twenty-five billion era uh, derivation cash refund. And the paper says that the South South some South House governors came under a more scrutiny uh, yesterday over their use of uh, the 13 percent derivation fund paid to them by the federal government. One of the states defended its use of the funds, but stakeholders are demanding for accountability. According to the stakeholders, the paper says that uh, there's little or nothing to show uh, in the oil producing communities to show for the huge funds, um, 625 billion. Uh, uh, we are talking about. Federal government paid this sum to Abia, Akwaibom, uh, by Elsa, Delta, Edo, Rivers, Ondo, Imo, and Cross River states. Uh, the payments covered 13% all derivation subsidy and Shopee funds. The refunds date from 1990 to 2021. One of the governors uh, close to you, your geographical location has been uh, shouting about this for some time. What are your thoughts? That, that, that's your talking about, uh, 
But he did not tell you the $150 million that uh, 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 Cypress made out of cost settlement. He did not mention that. Why didn't he mention that? Yes, I will agree that uh, the governors must account for the monies received. No doubt about that, because it's not there. Nobody is going to encourage fraud. If they don't account for it, then of course, Sheriff has even gone to court. But then the truth about it is that with the man that is shouting, is only shouting, I'm talking about the Asian Wiki, is only shouting simply because he wants to run with these governors who are supporting a team. Not that he's doing it as uh, a, a, a citizen, an, an honest citizen of the country. One of the $150 million that Cypher uh, paid out of court, as they ever mentioned it, did he discuss it? Did he tell him in reverse? The money that the Soviet Union he said the federal government paid, was it not the one that made you spend on federal projects, federal roads, that the federal government, he is just a beneficiary. That money was spent by a and the federal government responded. Then if we even talk of this one, the 30 minute realization, let us look at the cost of the projects he has done. Are they, are they commensurate with the cost commensurate with the money that has been received thus far? It is not that the black men, the South South governors that are with are that are with a tick with that But that does not mean that they should not account for the money. It doesn't mean. But the disclosure was not done for intensely good reasons. It was done done for intensely bad reasons to run into the South South governors who are in support of a tick. Well, we have to go at this point. Thank you so much, Okunabo and Katara, for being part of this. I, I really apologize for joining me. No, I really apologize. That's fine. We appreciate you and compliment of the season once again. Same to you. Same to you. Good morning. Good morning. Right. Well, that's the size of uh, our look at what the papers have today. We'll be uh, taking a break. And when we come back, we have more conversations ahead. Of course, uh, we'll be looking at uh, uh, the differing opinions between the Independent National Electoral Commission on one hand and the president of Nigeria on the other hand as far as uh, attacks on ANEC facilities and effect on the forthcoming elections are concerned. Stay with us.